Uh, my name's Anthony Trapp, I'm the Managing Director and sole owner of Wildfire Safety Muggers. Well, what we're trying to achieve here today is what we've done in all of every other part of Australia, especially Victoria, South Australia, uh, WA. Um, our product that we've got here is an accredited bushfire shelter. We spent two years with the, um, the, the fire service in, in Victoria, which is the CFA, and also the Australian Building Commission. And this product is just another tool that people can use to um, uh, as refuge in a bushfire episode if they find themselves trapped or, or unable to um, uh, utilise their bushfire safety plan or survival plan. So we're here today, um, there's a lot of uh, people in the conference here today from fire engineers right through to all of uh, the head guys of the RFS and um, they're all coming in asking a lot of questions and that's what it's all about and we're letting them know what we've done all around Australia and um, we're trying to come here and uh, educate some people here in the Blue Mountains about the product we've got and what is available to them because a lot of people don't know what we have or what is available when it comes to human refuge and uh, as I said these units uh, have been tested, they're proven, they do work. We've spent two years as I said with the uh, CFA in Victoria and the Victorian Building Commission and other government testing agencies so hopefully the mission was to come here and, uh, and let more people know about us and that there are other things they can get. Uh, and um, so typically what uh, would a homeowner um, expect to pay to get one of these into their... Uh... Well the one big thing you've got here in, in the Blue Mountains is rock. The whole place is rock, everybody knows that. The units themselves are 12500 including GST. Your installation is a bit of a, a moving target. It really depends on what we need. If we've got to put on the side of a cliff, we need an excavator with a rock breaker. What size crane do we need? That could be variable. I would think, at a guess, a straightforward installation in the Blue Mountains with a little bit of rock in, in, involved, I'd say around the 17 to 20 mark, somewhere in that window. I can't see them going over 20 unless it's an unusual installation. In, in Victoria especially, and, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, Australia-wide, uh, if you build in a high-risk bushfire area, you've got to build your house to what's called Bell FZ, which is bushfire attack level flame zone. There's many different levels. Flame zone is the highest, the unit you see behind you here, that is rated for absolute worst case bushfire. So it's rated to flame zone and beyond. In Victoria at the moment, to uh, uh, an average house build, if you were to build in a flame zone area, immediately add $100,000 to the build. Double glazed windows, all other safety issues you've got to put into that house to withstand a bushfire. Now, some of the catastrophic fires we've had, Black Saturday, is a classic example that a lot of the houses didn't quite make the grade even though they're rated to flame zone. Mm. Now the government, uh, the Victorian Building Commission and the government in their wisdom have now allowed people to uh, build their houses in a flame zone area to a lower rating. Sometimes they'll go down one, maybe two ratings to build 40 or 29 as long as they install an accredited private push shelter on that property. Now that does come into different areas, it's really to do with the planning department and what overlays you may have on your property, whether that'll work for you, but it's certainly a great idea because in a lot of areas we put these bunkers, I don't think anything you built above ground that's made out of timber, brick, plaster, tin roof, tiled roof will survive in a bushfire and I think it's, it's exceptional of them to, um, to come up with this concept and, and a lot of people are starting to do that. Um, they would rather a bunker than uh, a, a flame zone built house and a classic example of that we did a, uh, put a bunker for a gentleman in the in uh, the place called uh, Bunyip State Park in Victoria. He lived almost right in the middle of this uh, state park. The house was a sprawling mansion, single story, all glass, double glazed windows. The, the, ex the cost of the house is in the millions, I don't know exactly what it was. Most of it was probably in the glass. He was actually putting one of our bunkers in because he was not going to trust that house in a bushfire even though it was built to the latest spec. Evacuation is absolutely number one, there's no question about that. What you've got to really do is, is that they're here in case your plan goes wrong. The car doesn't start, the, um, uh, the dogs run away, you, you can't find your car keys, you've got something to turn to then as a backup and that's where the refuges come in.
Well, we're, we're hoping being here today and we've met with a, uh, quite a few influential people to do with bushfire and council and planning and all that sort of thing, is that just take a bit harder look at what we do and, um, and, and we will work with them. Um, whether we need to install a bunker somewhere to show people what's going on, more than happy to do all that as we've done in other states. Um, hopefully they'll see that these are just another tool, along with your fire pumps, along with your hoses, along with your water tanks, this is just another tool. They're not an incentive to stay on your property in a bushfire evacuate as I just mentioned a minute ago, but we have a lot of people that are absolutely, positively going to stay and fight to protect their property. One of these is the greatest insurance policy they'll ever have. If they get overcome by the fire for whatever reason, if they're hit by flying um, a debris, they trip over and sprain an ankle. Simple things like that can happen when you're in the middle of an emergency. They've got this as a backup. So again, it's just a refuge to get you out of the fire front for as long as it's needed.